If you've been following me for a while now on YouTube and especially Twitter, you would know one of my favourite films is 2019's The Gentleman. Guy Ritchie, for me in a lot of ways, is what I would call the perfect director. He can make something good, but there's always something new to learn. He doesn't say, oh, I'm the master, I've learned all I can. No. He tries new things. Some can be weaker than others. Some can be so impactful that we watched by new generations 20 years later. But the point is, in learning all of this, you hone your skills, and that is where 2019's The Gentleman comes into play, because this film is the culmination of all his best works. I see a lot of Lockstock, Snatch, Rock and Roller, and even Sherlock Holmes in this film. The comedy was perfectly timed. <laughs> The scenario was believable. The runtime, ideal, clocking in at 1 hour 53 minutes, and the acting was on point. There once was a young and foolish dragon who came to ask a wise and cunning lion about acquiring his territory. And the lion, he wasn't interested, so he told the little dragon to fuck off. But the dragon couldn't understand what fuck off meant, so he persisted and continued to ask the lion about acquiring his territory. So the lion took the little dragon for a walk and put five bullets in his little dragon head. End of story. So, when I heard they were going to do a series about this world that Richie has devised, I was genuinely excited. And two days ago, they dropped a few images and bits of information. And I have to say, after reading what they have released, I am still very much looking forward to this series. My mind... Mm, my mind was slightly cautious in one regard, but we'll get to that later. Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman TV series gets a first look at new cast. A son inherits much more than he bargained for. I mean, that's an interesting tagline alone, isn't it? So, at this point, it's clearly got to do with a, a wealthy family of some sort. How this connects to the original film? Well, let's see. The series, which is inspired by the Miramax film of the same name, will see a new host of faces living in the world of the 2019 action comedy. The show boasts a star of the cast, which includes the White Lotus star Theo James, a great actor, I've got to say. Kea Scodelario, um... Hmm, wasn't she the actress who couldn't act in Pirates of the Caribbean and couldn't act in The Maze Runner? Oh, and couldn't act in Skins and basically can't act? At least not very well in my opinion. Yeah, that's probably not the best choice, but we move on. I hate Lucy's Daniel Ings. I hope that's how you pronounce that. Lady Chatterley's lover star Jolie Richardson. Vinnie Jones. Hey lads! That wanker's got a frog football shirt on! Let's give this Nancy a fucking good kick in! Come on, lads! It's going off! Yeah. When I read Vinny was going to be in this, I thought, yeah, okay. Now, this is proper Richie production. It is a proper production. I can live with Kaya, okay? Maybe she'll be better in this. Who knows? Miracles can happen. But Vinny Jones, mwah, yes, he needs to be a part of this. What, someone from the old era needs to be here. Better Call Saul's Giancarlo Esposito. Nice casting there, I have to say. And Hijack's Max Beasley. So far, not too bad in who they have lined up as the top stars of the cast. I'll give it a solid eight out of 10 for me. Just from the outset, obviously I haven't seen the series, so this is just a preliminary thing about who's been involved. There are other cast members, but these are the main ones, and these are the, really the main ones to focus on for now until we see the actual show. The Gentleman sees Eddie Horniman, Theo James. Wait a minute. Horniman? As in horny man? <laughs> you know Richie's got a sense of humour. Unexpectedly inherit his father's sizable country estate, only to discover it's part of a cannabis empire. And now we see the beginnings of the connections to the film. Moreover, a host of unsavoury characters from Britain's criminal underworld want a piece of the operation. Determined to extricate his family from their clutches, Eddie tries to play the gangsters at their own game. However, as he gets sucked into the world of criminality, he begins to find a taste for it. I mean, as a synopsis, I really can't fault this. This seems really interesting. My biggest fear going into reading this was if this was going to be a prequel series because it could end up having a lukewarm reception as did The Continental. I personally enjoyed The Continental, but the majority did not. So I'd hate to see the potential of this be ruined. That, that's all. Guy Ritchie has attempted to make TV versions of his films in the past. 
I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels he did. He did Snatch. I can't think of any others right now. But they didn't exactly go far. That I mean, you probably haven't even heard of the Lock, Stock series, have you? Many people haven't. When I brought this up to my friends, they were, like, completely confused at the fact there was one. But thankfully, I can report it is said to be a sequel series, which gives leeway to do other things. Expand the lore introduce new characters, things you can't really do with a prequel because you are set by the rules of what comes next. So that's all really great to me. I, I mean, seriously, this is a positive video. I am looking forward to this series. The only, hmm, I'm not going to call it a problem because it's not a problem, but potential disappointment is that when we watch the film, you see Mickey Pearson escape and is all fine with his wife. According to Collider, there is a mention in the series synopsis of Mickey Pearson played by Matthew McConaughey, so there is potential for the great actor to reprise his role in some capacity in the series. Many film fans would want to know what happened to Mickey Pearson since he escaped in the original, but this may not occur, with McConaughey's name not officially on the cast list. It just would be like a real big shame because McConaughey owned the role. He definitely showed that Mickey Pearson held to the principal motto of the series. If you wish to be the king of the jungle, it's not enough to act like a king. You must be the king. And I mean, I should add that Mickey Pearson not being involved may have something to do with what I found in another synopsis for the series. The series follows Eddie Holstead, 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 probably saying it wrong, who has inherited his father's sizable estate only to discover that it's sitting on top of a weed empire owned by the legendary Mickey Pearson. So we've got to mention that. Has this straight up soldier got what it takes to master the dark arts of the British criminal underworld and take control of the entire operation? It's that last part about taking control. Clearly, whatever happened behind the scenes means we are not going to get a sequel film to the OG cut with the OG cast. So, Richie has essentially moved whatever plans they had for the sequel film and transplanted them here with the new cast in a TV series format. Take it from me. I hope it works. I hope this is the best thing we see on television, but we've all been stung way too many times. We've been stung so often, it would be remiss for me not to say that if this turns out to be a stinker, I will not hesitate to rip the shit out of it on my channel. I really won't. We're at the point now where either something's going to be really good or really bad. Mediocre doesn't cut it anymore. So all I can say is this. I wish you all the luck in the world, Guy Ritchie. I genuinely do. Please don't fuck it up. <laughs> And in regards to everyone else, I will see you all in my Doctor Who review. Yeah, that, that's my sentiments exactly.